Hello everyone, this is Quinn the Princess. And God Gun. And today we will be bringing you Chapter 5 of Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Chapter 5, A New Friend? Author's note. Hello, friends. I'm very sorry if this chapter is a bit shorter than usual because... I'm just trying to get <laughs> that out of the way and everything messed up. <laughs> you, just, you like scroll all the way down the page. I was trying to get it out of the way of the thing. Oh, here, start, okay. start from there. <laughs> like, and I like how you you tried to keep it going, but then you just you ran out of material. Like, you just improvised. <laughs> because I'm a Christian and I love the Lord and um, blessings. <laughs> Because just as soon as one sick little one gets better, wouldn't you know it, another one starts running the fever. Whew, a mommy's life sure is exhausting. I wasn't planning on posting another chapter until things had settled down, but the hubby says the work of the Lord doesn't wait for the whims of men. Or sick children, apparently. <laughs> so you can all thank Ephesians 5... five, five I can't say numbers. <laughs> Five twenty two twenty four for the speedy update. And do you want to read it at the bottom, or do you want to wait? I will. Later? I will read it. Okay. Ephesians five twenty two twenty four. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as oh the my. church is subject under Christ, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. But that's just Old Testament garbage. <laughs> not to not to step on any uh, toes or anything, but <laughs> we're. Uh... <laughs> she went to a Christian college. It's, it's okay. <laughs> oh, and on that note, some of you lovely readers have requested me to write down the Bible verses after each chapter. Well, far be it from me not to not spread the word of the Lord. Another question I have gotten: in the original books, Harry Potter and friends frequently question authority, and how do I feel about this? Why does she put original books in quotations like she's questioning their validity <laughs> or something? Well, that is quite a toughie you have asked me. I talked to the hubby, and we agreed that usually it is good to obey authority, but when authority is acting contrary to the Lord, you should talk to that authority about it. Acts 5.29, which is... Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So that's, you know, relevant. I, I think, like, we kind of gave her a bad rap because the only one that didn't really make sense was the first one. She did something about, like, threshing wheat. Yeah. But all the others have kind of been, like, yeah. in vain, like, with the story. You don't take the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> You might just see authority figures making bad decisions in this chapter. Nobody is perfect except the Lord. No, not even Dumbledore. No matter what the original books told you. <laughs> the original books told me that Dumbledore was far from perfect. Dumbledore was a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and how Harry Potter handles this will be a big question in the story. Hint. It will be very different than the original books. Why do you keep putting that in quotes? And finally, I got a PM from a lovely friend who was a bit confused, so I'll just clear this up now. I do not own the original <laughs> books, and those belong to JKR. So, without further ado... <clears throat> Harry Potter woke up drowsily in a comfy, fluffy mattress. Not on the mattress, but in the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> he was very confused. Harry was going to suffocate the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> this fic is much shorter than the original books, apparently. <laughs> it was only now that he had the energy to observe his surroundings. It was very white and very dark, and I can't very well breathe. Closer to God. <laughs> Uh. The room was small, but also everything a little boy needed. There was a big, warm fireplace in the grey stone wall across from him, a shelf of intelligent, age-appropriate books. The Holy Bible was in the centre of the shelf, of course. I wouldn't really call the Holy Bible appropriate for all ages. <laughs> well, just saying. Might skip over the murder and rape parts a little mm -hmm. bit till they're older, but... 
I'm, Dumbledore, I have a question. What is a, what, what is a sodomite? I oh, don't worry about that when you come away, Jerry. <laughs> and there was a simple wood dresser of respectable, school-appropriate attire. So, robes. <laughs> I mean. Pretty much, like, you, you ever notice how in the movies, like, after the second movie, they never actually wore any of their school clothes? <laughs> I like, mean, wasn't the only thing required the robes? They never wore those either. Yeah, they, they always wore the robes. No, they didn't. They wore jeans half the time. I mean, the, the cloaks that go over them. That's the only really required part. I know, but they hardly wore that. Like, Hermione, like, in the third book, remember, or third movie, sorry, she was, like, in jeans and a hoodie. When they were walking outside, not to class. Yeah, I guess so. And there was a simple wood dresser of respectable, school-appropriate attire, and, of course, a clean porcelain sink for washing up and brushing teeth and such. It was only then that our hero noticed that there was another bed in the room. It was the same as his own bed, except that this other bed had not been made. Rude. Also, this bed had its own Bible in it. In it? Like it was also stuck under a mattress? Damn. And it looked different from the one on the shelf. But... Where was this new roommate of his? Aren't you paying attention? It's the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> like the Bible gets its own bed. <laughs> Greetings, Harry. Oh, a talking book! Yeah, Harry, you're going to have to put up a lot of talking books in this. <laughs> it's Harry Potter. <laughs> Come on. Uh, da, 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 da. Harry looked up. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm losing my place a lot. Yeah, you well, at least I didn't, like, scroll past my place. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I tried to keep it. You did, you did try. Harry looked behind him to see a small, pallid young boy with shockingly bright red hair and kneeling with seeming piety as he prayed to a small statue. At this shocking sight, Harry felt a horror, but he quickly composed himself and declared bravely, Hello, friend. My name is Harry Potter, and I take it that we are roommates. What is your name? Why is that bravely declaring? I don't know. He's making small talk. Does he have, like, such severe anxiety that yes. he has to, like, steal himself for conversation with people? Yes. Oh, goodness. I'm trying to remember, like, what voice I've given Ron before. I thought you were doing the wrong voice. I know, but I'm trying to remember how it goes. <clears throat> Ronald Weasley! The other boy responded friendly, and he reached out a hand to shake. Oh, sorry, let me just put that back in the box with the others. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Whose hand is that? It's mine. It goes with the other boxes. <laughs> Don't you hear me what I'm saying? <laughs> Welcome to Hogwarts. I'm a Christian, too. Really? Harry explained delightedly. Well, it's a Hogwarts school of prayer and miracles. Come on, Harry. I mean, Harry, for real. It's okay. I went to a Methodist college and... Nobody we, was... <laughs> well, not to say nobody, well, but like, yeah. we got a few Jewish people going there and I'm like, well, well it's not like you were that? very pious. Either. No, it's true. But I'm just saying, like, what? I don't I understand. I really understood why you wanted to go to a Christian college. It's not that I want to go to a Christian college. It's I just, just didn't want to be around a bunch of people. There weren't a whole bunch of people there. It's very small. <laughs> It did kind of look like Hogwarts, too, which is a blessing. I really did. Um, Harry's so... Yeah. Really? Harry exclaimed delightedly and clapped his hands together. This is joyous news! Wow. <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald smiled deviously, and Harry remembered that he had just seen this boy praying to a statue, and he wondered why that would be. But he was new to this whole Christianity thing, and maybe that was okay. Still, it didn't feel quite right. He bravely resolved to bring it up with Dumbledore. Is, is that just his new thing? Is it because, like, he's supposed to be a Gryffindor? I guess. Like, <laughs> Gryffindors are cattle tails. They have to do everything bravely. It's like, it's like, I love that post. It's like, Hogwarts quizzes be like, how do you brush your teeth? Bravely. <laughs> while reading a book. <laughs> while making breakfast. I'm a snake! <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Ron is evil in this fanfic too. Isn't He's there a, always it's a what trope, is that trope? Yeah. Ron the Death Eater, yes. which ironically does not exist anymore. That fanfic, right? Um, I think they deleted it. I don't know. Would you like to come with me to breakfast? 
Ronald queered politely. Queered. Queer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Doing? I'm queer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's just, just so much gay in me. It's coming out in my reading. Would you like to come with me to breakfast? Ron queried politely. <laughs> Not queered. <laughs> As he got up from the statue he had been kneeling in front of. They have delicious food here in the Great Hall. Would I ever? Harry cried delightedly. Wow. <laughs> this guy, I swear to God. <laughs> and he bolted out of the bed and brushed his teeth and washed his face. This little one certainly had a healthy appetite. <laughs> in a jiffy, Harry and his new friend had joined the stream of young lads on the steep, winding stairs heading to breakfast. Where do they all sleep? In different rooms. Mm. They could smell the aroma of breakfast from the Great Hall, and it wafted up to their noses. Before they knew it, they were sitting in the Great Hall. Come sit with me and my family, Ronald offered eagerly, and he motioned frantically toward a table packed full of people with hair just as red as his. A whole table? The least <laughs> now take up a whole table? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Molly. Arthur and Molly have been busy! <laughs> Come on, come on, come on! I can't wait for them to see that I made a new friend! <laughs> or just a friend, period. <laughs> oh, hello, Ron. You've been playing with those hands in a box again. No, I actually have a real person this time. Oh, huzzah! Our brother's finally branching out! <laughs> Still, Harry, I would keep an eye on your hands from now on if I were you. Harry followed Ronald with the obedience of one who does not have many friends in a new situation. Or one who will be very quickly led into an abusive relationship very soon. <laughs> oh, what difficult circumstances that can be, and how many believers have been led astray by those situations. Guys, guys, guys! Ronald screeched joyously as he pulled, <laughs> as he pulled Harry toward the table of his family. This is Harry Potter, and he is my new roommate. Hello, Harry! <laughs> the Weasleys chorused in unison. A whole table full. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy, you just need to stop. I just... Or maybe Fred and George have just, like, cloned themselves. <laughs> and Janice is like, oh my god. I can't handle this. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Uh, hello. Harry stammered shyly. Something about this group made him nervous. Like the fact that there's like 50 <laughs> children in one family to take up a whole table in the Great Hall. Must be one of them Mormons. <laughs> That's not Christian enough. That's not the proper way. Oh, this is going to get very uh, specialized and uh, sort of bigoted very soon. I just want to. I just want to warn everyone. Yes. Especially the Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. It's, uh, <laughs> it's my way or the highway. Here. Something about this group made him nervous. Uh, nice to meet you. He sat down at their table. He could smell a delicious breakfast. But where was the food? We all ate it. I'm sorry, you got here too late for breakfast. We all finished it without you. No sooner had the thought crossed his mind when the Reverend Dumbledore came onto the Great Hall stage and dropped down to his knees, raised his hands skyward, and screamed! <laughs> screamed! <laughs> screamed. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> no, I won't. I won't do that. But <laughs> That's about what you said. <laughs> Just imagine. Dear Lord, please provide these devout young ones with three strips of bacon or lengths of sausage each. Two for the ladies. Because, you know, girls gotta be freaking thin or whatever. They can't eat bacon for breakfast. Screw you, Reverend Dumbledore. I'll eat all the bacon I want. A bowl of hearty oatmeal flavored with cinnamon and apple chunks. Two poached eggs cooked all the way through. Home fries seasoned with garlic. I don't know if that's like a thing. Yeah, Sounds it really gross. It a glass of orange juice and milk, preferably one in each glass. Because <laughs> that's a <laughs> musical. <laughs> <laughs> gross. And ditches up to the task. 
Because you got to include that, because the one time he didn't ask, God was like... <laughs> God just rained the food down, like, in cloudy and a chance of meatballs, and everyone got, like, hit in the head. Like, oh, it's going to be that way, is it, dear Lord? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be that way, is it, <laughs> I, I think God gets rather peeved with all this uh, asking for stuff that they don't really need, so <laughs> he's got to get his kicks and jollies one way or another. <clears throat> Harry was once again amazed to see the food appear in front of him. The food looked and smelled amazing. He suspected that good old Minerva had something to do with this delicious spread. No. Well, no, because they just asked God. Why would Minerva have anything to do with it? I don't know. Unless this whole thing is a sham, and <laughs> and Dumbledore is really like Charles Manson, and Minerva is like pulling like the strings of this like <laughs> puppeteer thing and making all the food appear as if by magic, and he's trying to like convince these little children that he's like a reverend, but really he's just trying to turn them all into homicidal maniacs. Oh my god. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, actually. It it's kind of creepy. Dumbledore, the cult leader. <laughs> but before he dug into the food, he remembered that he had something to discuss with the Reverend. Harry fought his nervousness, and then he ran after Dumbledore as he hopped dexterously off the stage. It's pretty spry for an old man. Yeah. Excuse me, the young believer cried innocently as he ran after the Reverend as fast as his little legs could carry him. Oh, he's very spry for an old man. <laughs> Why is he running? Like... <laughs> Because the red one is like fucking high tailing it out of there. But why? I don't know. Death waits for no one. <laughs> Excuse me, Reverend. What is it, son? The Reverend reiterated kindly. He was dressed respectively in sturdy, manly jeans and a red, white, and blue plaid shirt over which a few virile tresses were visible. Ugh. Gross. What, what is with her in chest hair? I don't know. It's very weird. It's weird. I don't like it. Yeah. And a pair of admirable brown cowboy boots. Are you settling in all right? I sure am, Harry retorted graciously. How are things with your family? Very well, replied Dumbledore knowledgeably, and he was impressed with the little one's manners. Was there something you wanted to talk to me about? Well, Harry began uncomfortably and he scuffed his blue sneakered foot against the polished wood floor of the great hall. I'm surprised she remembered that little detail. Like, he had blue shoes at the beginning. I guess he didn't have time to change. I woke up this morning and saw my roommate praying to a statue. Is that really an okay thing to do? Hmm, that is a real toughie, Dumbledore answered ponderously. Well, I don't worship idols. It is, in fact, a very unchristian thing to do. But you see, here at Hogwarts, we divide ourselves into sorting hats. After breakfast, all the new little ones will choose their hats. Each one of the different hats has different beliefs, but we all love the Lord. And what more in common do you need? <sighs> that does sound true, Harry pondered sensitively. But is it really? It seems that if we all really love the Lord, we don't need to divide ourselves. Are the divisions between the different hats really so significant as to merit dividing Christianity? What are these divisions? I never understood why they call them, like, sorting hats, like Gryffindor hat and Slytherin hat and Ravenclaw hat. Oh, don't worry about it that much. But, like, I don't remember. Are they supposed to be, like, do they look like the sorting hat or are they, like, baseball caps? They're baseball caps. That's so weird. Well, they are somewhat significant, Dumbledore allowed tentatively. For instance, I am a Gryffindor hat. We believe everything in the Bible, and only the Bible. That redhead roommate of yours is a Slytherin hat. I'm sorry, when did Ron Weasley become a Slytherin? It's not as bad as, as Draco Malfoy later in the story. You'll, uh, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> and Slytherins worship statues? Harry queered innocent. <laughs> Again! Again with the queered! Oh, goodness. And Slytherins worship statues? Harry queried innocently. The Reverend nodded gravely. Then how are they quish quish question? <laughs> you are question, Harry. Then how are they Christian? Harry questioned skeptically. What about Exodus twenty four through six? That's a ten commandment. And it is 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord, <laughs> thy God, and I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of those that love me and keep my commandments. I don't know what I turned into candle. <laughs> you know, the Lord is capitalized. <laughs> yeah. Well... They have different commandments. Should I say commandema commandments? <laughs> Dumbledore explained well-meaningly. They love the Lord, and that is all we need. But do they really love the Lord? I don't know, Harry! Stop asking so many damn questions! <laughs> but do they really love the Lord? Harry posited timidly. If they do, then why do they worship statues? <laughs> I don't know the the saints. I know not really the same. They're as not. Idol worship. They're not idol worshiping. Like basically, if you haven't picked up on it right now, the um the you Slytherins are to the, a statue of the Virgin Mary. The yeah. Slytherins in this story are Catholics, and the Gryffindor hats in the story are like Protestants. No, they're not Protestants because they they Methodists. take the Bible very. No, they're not Methodists. Like Methodists, um. I'll get to the, each house as they come, but so far we know that Gryffindor hats obey the Bible and only the Bible, so they're, I don't, they might be Lutheran or Presbyterian. I think maybe Lutheran because they kind of take things very literally. I do. Like they believe that the rapture is like you actually physically come back from the dead. So they might be Lutheran. They might just be Christian fundamentalists like Uncle Vernon. Um, I, I'll have to look it up, but I know Slytherin hats are definitely meant to be Catholics, uh, because of the icons, um, which are not the same as idols. <laughs> if they do, then why do they worship statues? Dark days are coming, Dumbledore replied earnestly. We need to be inclusive. And that's why we divide all of the <laughs> houses by belief. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If there were only Gryffindor hats at Hogwarts, then there would not be many people left. I see, Harry conceded uncertainly as he walked back to Ronald's overcrowded table. <laughs> Full of siblings. Oh, <laughs> Molly, just, it's just stop. It's De enough. Well, it depends on how many, how, I'm sorry, it depends on how big the tables are. I mean, if we're thinking if it's the same Great Hall. Oh my god. Yeah. Full of Weasleys. <laughs> just nothing but Weasleys. <laughs> Apparently, the muggle invention of condoms has not made its way to the wizarding world. Oh I can't even imagine. Like, Draco, what is this plan B you've been laughing about? <laughs> it's the latest <laughs> thing, Father! <laughs> it sounds like a muggle invention! No, no, Father! No, <laughs> it's very exclusive! <laughs> Buy me ten! <laughs> <laughs> Not sure why Draco would need Plan B. I mean, <laughs> maybe Pansy does. Maybe. <laughs> he was getting nervous about this hat business, but he supposed he did have to trust Dumbledore. After all, grown ups know best, right? No. Not always. God, this is such a boring chapter. Like, nothing even happened. I wonder, um, how long this was. Oh, goodness, it was like 30 minutes! Yeah, that's 30, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> it was like us talking. Because we've like... been reading for like a half an hour and nothing happened. <laughs> I know, but like, I really want to get to Draco Malfoy, because he's my favorite in any fic. And he's very exclusive. Exclusive, Bob. <laughs> I'm going to have to do My Immortal before I do this one, though. Or at least that chapter. Because that's where that's where we did the first exclusive thing. What? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. It was the black Mercedes Benz. Oh. Yeah. So I, I often get my jokes mixed up with different fanfics. I totally thought that we did that in, like, the first chapter of this fic. No, but it's okay, because I post them all at the same time anyway. All right, well, it's coming up on 30 minutes, so I'm going to say goodbye for now. You gonna say bye, Cod Cod? Oh, bye.
Bye. God, God does not wish to tell you goodbye. God, God does not tell you goodbye. And anyone who told you otherwise is a liar. Bye. Bye-bye.